Hello and welcome. Today, today is special. Today I have my very first guest on the Make Marketing Great podcast, Craig Campbell. For those listening, Craig is what I would regard as one of the leading SEO gurus in the UK. He's been in the field for over two decades now and has seen his own fair share of success. From working as a freelancer, starting a marketing agency, traveling the world as a speaker at marketing events and having his own YouTube channel with over 100,000 plus followers, He's even been featured in places like Forbes, Business Insider, and Search Engine Journal, and I believe has his own books out on marketing. He is without doubt one of the greatest in his field, and personally, personally, he is one of the individuals I first saw as a role model when getting into the field of SEO. I'm blessed to have him on, and I'm sure he'll give us some amazing insights for all of us to listen to in the world of SEO and marketing. So, Craig, Happy New Year. How's the New Year treating you? <laughs> Thank you. Happy New Year to you, first and foremost, um, Alan. But how's the New Year treating me? I actually had a dose of COVID to to start the New Year off, so it hasn't been a great start. That is me literally just getting back to some kind of normality. <laughs> and even at that, I'm still not 100%, so it has been uh, a weird start to the New Year. Oh, interesting. Actually, I caught my second round of COVID towards the back end of uh, 2022. But it can, it, can be, it can be quite tricky, isn't it? So, but yeah, I guess um, we got to keep carrying on, I suppose. But um, yeah, so one of the things that I wanted to get into, and obviously I've, I've, I've seen a lot of content with regards to yourself and the world of, of SEO. But one of the things that I wanted to ask you is if we could double back to those years way before how exactly did you get into the world of SEO what intrigued you what made you fancy it so much that you know you wanted to in, invest your 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 life into this the side of digital marketing um so it was a combination of timing luck uh, and a bunch of other stuff now the way that I've explained this because uh, I get asked this one all the time how the hell did you start out <laughs> with SEO. Um, so I was born in 1980, so I'm 42 just now. Uh, now, I left school in 1997, seven, 16, 17 years old, whatever it was, and had no clue what I wanted to do. But round about 1997, 1998 was the period of time where I got dial-up internet put in the house, um, which was a big, big change to to everyone's life, you know, having the internet in the house, you know, we as kids growing up didn't have mobile phones, we didn't have access to to everything that's available now, no social media, nothing. Um, so I was quite mesmerised by the internet just because it was new, brand new and all that stuff. But, you know, a couple of years went past um, where... I had a few dead end jobs, didn't quite know what I wanted to do, the same as many people that, that, that are that age. And, uh, you know, had a call center job. I worked in Burger King, I had sales jobs, I had all these crappy jobs, and none of them really satisfied me in any great way. <laughs> um, but obviously, in my, my spare time, you know, chatting to girls on MSN and playing around on the internet was, was a big thing because it was new and fashionable. Uh, so the kind of hunger came from that. And, and you know, I started to mess around with websites, you know, just as the years progressed. I'm just like, hmm, you know, what's this website thing? And, uh, you know, messed about with a bit of HTML. And, um, you know, going into like the year 2000 um, or 2001, you know, I was a really bad web designer, just just as a side hustle, just messing around, trying to understand the internet, and decided at that point that I was really crap at it, um, and looked for something else that, online, and that is what SEO now is. Um, you know, I, I, it was all forum-based learning, there was no Facebook, there was no YouTube, there was none of that stuff. So, you know, I was on some kind of forums, web forums, and people were talking about, you know, trying to uh, promote websites um, on, on the search engines. And um, I started to go down that rabbit hole and never quite came back out of that rabbit hole. So, um, I, you know, the only thing I can really say is I never sat there ever going, I want to be an SEO guy. 
Um, I didn't even know what SEO was. You know, even at 17, I could barely switch a bloody computer on, let alone, um, you know, do these things. So, and you know, even friends who <coughs> I've met up in recent times who I used to go to school with cannot believe the... The, the the business that I do, you know, they're just like, you know, I would never have thought that would have been you. Um, so it was a weird one, but I think it is essentially down to timing and a bit of luck, to be honest. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when, for example, when I got into the field of SEO, it was actually just by a mistake, to be honest with you. Um, judging from my experience, I got into SEO, actually, when as a marketing manager, I received, you know, countless calls, you know, I was on that side where um, uh, I would have meetings with marketing agencies, and they would pull through all these systems like SEM Rush and everything. And I've always been the type of person that, you know, doesn't just sit down there. I've always been the person that sits down and says, you know, like, how, you know, what is this system? And how do they exactly do this and everything? I don't technically rely too much on on, on outsiders doing too, too much. You know, I like to be a little bit hands-on. And when I got into to the realm of SEO, I found it to be quite formidable and quite challenging as well. And not to mention quite rewarding as well when it actually does work, but it requires so much, uh, so much work. What would you say would be one of the biggest aspects of SEO that you do like? You know, what, what do you find it to be most rewarding? Do you find it like when it comes, do you, do you find it more rewarding when you see businesses come back to you and they, they say like, you know, judging from what you've done for us, you know, or, or some of the some of the advice that you've given to businesses, do you find that you get more more of um, a greater feeling from admiration from the work that you've done, or is it you know the likes of looking at the you know like whether it become from impressions or clicks, you know, from Google Search Console or things like that? I mean, I think essentially, it's always nice to have um, you know a client come to you and say, you know, you've you've taken my business from like. 100 grand a year to to a million pounds a year or whatever the figures might be and um, of course that's always nice but I think um you know for me it's always about the figures the money that you can make online has always been the the main driver you know whether it's a small affiliate website that I've taken from doing 20 bucks to to 500 bucks to 5,000 bucks you know making that money is just you know, I still pinch myself going like, wow, um, wow, um, you know, that, 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 you know, I like technology, I like new tools, I like, you know, AI, I like, um, you know, all the kind of shiny objects, if you like, that, that we all probably love, you know, um, I like all of that as well. But, you know, the reality is um, the ability to make money um, without it being capped um is, is what interests me um a lot and and you know i think you know you'd be lying to sit there and say yeah you know i love sitting doing keyword research and you know planning out <coughs> this topical cluster and you know then outsourcing all the content and you know pulling your hair out when it comes back and it's not done the way you want it you know seo can be a tedious um job at times and repetitive um and, and very frustrating um uh, certainly you know if you're outsourcing the elements of it and it's not done to the the required standard that you're maybe looking for um so i find a lot of that you know boring repetitive the same as everyone else but obviously um from there obviously helping businesses grow helping people grow uh it is something that you know i take great delight in um, and being able to um you know see people grow as people and um, through their online business you know that's quite evident um <clears throat> i've actually been seeing a lot of uh, recent content particularly on your youtube channel one of the one of the podcasts that you actually did with uh, a guy called ryan durani which i think is an absolute fantastic uh, guy and he's really progressing in his field as well not to mention online i've seen loads of uh, his bits of content and i think he really is growing quite well but um you reference uh a lot about affiliates and um and that when when did that start taking off when did you start looking into the affiliate side of you know you progressing as an individual within within your field <laughs> very late in my career is the honest answer um so i've been in this from 2001 um so i you know done the freelancer thing um for for about four or five years I then owned an agency 
for for nine or ten years. So I was fifteen years in before I really gave it a thought about affiliate marketing and and not begging clients for money, chasing up invoices, and all the stressful things that that many people do. Um, you know when we do this work. Um, so it was at that point I'm like, geez, there's got to be an easier way to to make money that's less stressful you know the the clients dropping off or the clients ghosting you because they don't want to pay the invoice everyone suffered that right so um that part um you know really got to, got to me and uh, you know running an agency itself you know I found quite stressful managing lots of people because I, I you know I didn't set out to to become an agency owner and, and certainly wasn't trained um, to be in charge of people. Um, so there was a lot of mistakes, I, I, you know, a lot of things I didn't do quite right with the agency, um, you know, and, and I, it was quite a frustrating period of time. It was just, I'd done okay money, but there was a lot of stress that went with it. So after, you know, running that, the, the goal was to pivot away and get into affiliate and, and you know, scale back in the client work and, and scale back on having a, a big noose around my neck, which was all the staff and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, for me, you know, 2015, I started to think, I'm sat behind an agency here, no one knows who I am, build a personal brand, try and get this affiliate thing going on. Um, and, you know, probably for the last six or seven years or eight years, whatever it is from 2015, um, I've slowly pivoted over uh, and it probably took me two years. I think I'd done my first ever speaking gig mid-2016. Um, but then, you know, live speaking gigs started for me in 2017. Um, so, you know, it's it's not been that long that I've been doing the whole public speaking thing and uh, affiliate and all that kind of stuff. It's certainly been, uh, you know, the way the the pivot that I wanted to make, um, and building that personal brand rather than the the agency that I had, um, so that was all there. And obviously, <coughs> you mentioned Ryan Durrani, who's a guy, um, who does very very well. He worked in an agency, hated it, um, wanted a way out. He wanted to get into how do you become a freelancer? How can I earn more money? How can I do affiliate? And and you know with Ryan. Um, you know, he's done that over the last two or three years um, and does very, very well for himself. Um, so it's great, again, to, to you know, if I've been able to help Ryan uh, in any way based on the experiences that I've had to, to kind of help him shape his way out of somewhere in a much shorter time. It took me 15 years or whatever it was to, or 14 years to, to, realize you know you're going down the wrong bloody hole here and um, you know get away from that there's easier ways less stressful ways and it's all down to your personal what you enjoy i'm not mocking having an agency at all there's people that do it very very successfully for me i just found it stressful and um i, I had to to go down a different route great great one of the things that um i have to admit um, and I think even on that particular podcast that you had with Ryan was the fact that um, considering yourself and how you've built yourself up to this particular stage, um, Ryan also said that he almost viewed you, I think he even used the word celebrity. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? And um, I think I had almost the same thing because obviously I reached out to you, I DM'd you at the beginning of the year uh, with Twitter. And to be honest with you, to give you a bit of an inkling as to what was going around, uh, you know, around that time was I was trying to see if I can get a uh, guest onto the podcast. Cause this was purely uh, a solo project. You know, I have a, a love for marketing and I wanted to stress as to like, how is marketing done and everything like that. But even when trying to approach you, I was always thinking like, what am, what am I thinking? Like, this is the guy that I first found when I was getting into this in Russia. He has his own profile. He's probably busy and everything like that. One of the things that I wanted to ask is, Considering yourself along the lines of other professionals, you know, like we speak about the, the likes of like um, Neil Patel and the rest of them, do you consider yourself a celebrity or an influencer within this space? Has it gotten to that stage? You know, because judging from again, like going back to Ryan, when he like when he approached you, he kind of summed himself up as to like say he's just human. Let me just try and see as to like how he would approach me. Do you know what I mean? Would you consider yourself a celebrity or an influencer? Or? <laughs> Nah, never. Uh, that's just in my nature not to 
you know, I don't believe in this whole thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, I've been there, you know, I've had, uh, you know, people that I've followed and looked up to and in and, and the SEO world as well. You know, Matthew Woodward was one of the guys that when yeah. I was running the agency, he was someone I followed and I thought, geez, you know, this guy's doing affiliate and having a much easier ride than me. Um, you know, I want to be that guy. Uh, and, and obviously I've been fortunate enough to, to have met uh, Matthew and uh, spend time with him. And again, he's just a normal dude that, that done well for himself. And, uh, you know, there's not a celebrity thing that, that, that goes on. Um, however, um, on the flip side of that, as I've put myself out over the years, spoken at events, um, you know, put yourself out on YouTube and, and all that kind of stuff, it, you know, <laughs> it's difficult because, you know, I go to events and people will come up and try and talk to you or ask for a picture um, and, you know, or they're like, oh, dude, you know, I just wanted to shake your hand because, you know, I've watched so many of your videos. Um, and it's always nice. And, and, you know, it's the closest thing I'll ever get to feeling like a celebrity. Uh, but, you know, the way I take it is it's nice because when I sit and do these things, I'm sat in a room myself in front of a camera, you know, doing a YouTube video, doing a podcast, whatever it is. And you don't realise who's watching it or what impact those words you have um, on other people. Um, so I, I think it's always nice, you know, when someone comes up and says, do you know what, you you know, you said this or you had that or, you know, one little thing you said, you know, helped me somewhat. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's great um, to hear. Um, and, yeah, you, you know, you, you, you do you know, get people approaching you and stuff. But no, I think it's always nice. And if anyone takes the time to to contact me and, and stuff, you know, I'm I, I'm always happy to oblige and uh, do what I can to help other people as well. You know, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We're all trying to make money. And, uh, you know, I've been on the flip side, flip side of it, looking at Matthew Woodward going, geez, um, you know, I want to be that guy. And when I met him, I'm like, fuck, you know, that's Matthew Woodward there. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, you know, but then we went out for some beers and, and all that stuff. So um I get it. I get it. But I d I don't consider myself to to be any better or, or anything more than you know I'm I'm I consider myself to be good at what I do, but I don't like the whole celebrity status thing. I you know, and anyone will tell you any events I've been at, you know, I was in India. And uh, a lot of people were, you know, wanting to say hello and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it can become overwhelming. <laughs> and I could have hidden. There was a, a room, designated room, where I could have hidden away from the the, the people. Um, if I wanted to just go and chill in there, I could have. Um, but one person in India said, Craig, we loved you because you were the, uh, you know, you spent the time talking to everyone um, and just mingling with everyone and, that's the way I see it. You know, it's all about networking um, and, and having conversations with people. So I try and uh, do what I can to, to help other people. Okay. All right. One of the things that I wanted to cycle back to is whilst you're in the public eye and obviously against uh, other SEO specialists that are probably looking at you and trying to find out how they can, you know, like get to where you are, you know, Judging from what you were saying in the in the podcast earlier, and you were saying that pretty much you started out your SEO career almost at the birth of like the internet, for example. Mm -hmm. What would you say you did differently to get to where you are now, especially in comparison to where others may be trying to, you know, get started in SEO, maybe thinking about, you know, looking towards becoming a freelancer? What would you say you did differently that really, you know, you know, gave you some of the success, you know, throughout uh, your two decades? I mean, I wouldn't say I'd done anything differently. Uh, I certainly say I was at a disadvantage when I was learning, um, purely because there wasn't as much material out there um, in terms of, you know, the videos and the social media and, you know, the co even the conferences um, weren't as big as they are now. Um, so I was at a disadvantage because it was forum based. So if I went on to a forum, for example, and you know, I was stuck with something and asked a question, people would either mock you or take days to reply with an answer. So you had to sift through a lot of crap 
in order to to develop and, and move forward. Whereas now, you know, if I can't if, you know, if I can't do something, stick it in YouTube, and there's you know a, a ton of guys you know sh- showing me an over the shoulder video on how to you know use a tool or whatever it might be. So I think you know back then, uh, the, you know, or the big thing that I had was was a hunger to succeed, uh, never give up, don't get put off, you know, but there was a lot of um, periods, you know, I would certainly say the first four or five years of doing SEO, I had no clue what I was doing, Um, no clue, Uh, I was just following what people told me to do, and looking back, some of that was absolute garbage, that, you know, I was following wrong people being misled trying stuff and it wasn't making a difference you know they're all like yeah yeah do this and you know i'm trying it and, and you know nothing's happening or if or, or, or the website's going backwards so i think you know i had a hunger and desire to succeed and i think that is the biggest thing that you can have you have to be passionate about seo and marketing um you know i see a lot of people that see seo and marketing as a nine to five job and that's fine nothing i'm not going to be critical of that because I've been in nine to five jobs and I've 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 not given a shit about the job or the product or service or whatever I've been selling. I'm I'm just there to to get my wage, <laughs> and that's fine as well. But what I see with the likes of you know your Ryan Durani's and many of the other people that are out there, SEO is more than a job to these people. It, it's an obsession. Um, you know, guys like Ryan Durani, just as an example, flew to Amsterdam so I was going to be in Amsterdam for a few days um and I was I was at this small event and Ryan's like oh you know do you mind if I come to Amsterdam as well and you know it'd be good to if you could sit down and talk to me and all that stuff and I'm like dude fly out you know no problem at all Ryan out of his own pocket paid to come and see me in Amsterdam for a couple of days um we, we had some beers we chilled out we spoke and all that kind of stuff so he initially took time out you know, at his own cost to come and see me, and he brought his his now wife with him, um, and then he came up to Scotland to see me several times. Again, staying in a hotel for you know a week at a time um, at his own cost um, to 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 you know surround himself with the right people. Um, I see too many SEO people who don't do that. You know, they don't go networking, they don't talk to other people, they do not go out with. Um, to to learn um and you know i think that is where a massive problem is um you know you've got to get out you've got to make mistakes you've got to be passionate about it and i think for most people who are really successful you know these guys live and breathe seo they, they, it's not just a nine to five for them yeah i get what you mean i get what you mean it's actually quite interesting that now that you're mentioning about some of the things that ryan have, has done i think i got to the point where he was mentioning that uh, he had met you in amsterdam but i think you need to really do something more you know especially for what you what you love to get you know to be relevant within this field as well i have a a, a question that i probably uh, some people may be in this particular situation and i'm sure you can understand there might be some marketeers that are stuck with their marketing agencies for example or stuck as a you know digital marketing manager and they're thinking about doing you know becoming the freelancer or might even be in the position where you know they see a particular niche within you know a segment in the marketing sphere and they want to go and start a marketing agency uh, could you describe like when you were doing things for yourself, were you scared of like doing it alone? What would you say to those that are, you know, potentially looking at, you know, becoming a freelancer or looking at a marketing agency or potentially even going down the affiliate route? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's always going to be that fear. Always. Um, even for me, I had a job and I'd done a bit of SEO side and then decided when I was earning more on the side hustle, which was SEO, that it was time to ditch the job. There, there had to be a time where I, I jumped and, and I sat on it, sat on it, sat on it, and I was working, you know, doing the day job and then coming home, having my dinner, then doing the, the side hustle through to three in the morning. I was I was knackered. Um, but, the you know, the, the thing is, the people that take the jump will be like, why did I not take that jump sooner? Always, always, always. Um, 
again, Ryan was a, a perfect example of that. So speaking to Ryan, you know, he, he felt that he'd had enough in the agency. He wasn't developing. He didn't believe in the the things that, the, you know, he was being trained or asked to do. Um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I get agency life in the corporate world, uh, you know, no offence to anyone. Um, but he wanted more than that. And uh, Brian probably worked in that agency for another six or seven months before he decided to to take the plunge. Um, and he was scared of money. You know, I've got a, I bought a house. I've got all of these things. So I get it. But, you know, for me, you can start off and grab a few clients on the side. You see how easy it is, but then you've got to pounce. It's got to be your thing. You know, I'm not saying here, uh, you know, jump out your day jobs, people, and, you know, all that kind of stuff, because I get the stress of having a mortgage and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, but not one person that I've ever kind of mentored, trained, or, or had conversations with has ever really failed. I've never known someone um, that's actually failed. Uh, God's honest truth. Um, but what is the worst that can happen? That you have to go back to that shitty job. You're already in the worst case scenario in your shitty ass job. Things can only get better, um, you know, if you do jump. Unless you're a complete lazy bandit, um, you know, and you don't want to do any work, then of course the, the, the money is going to dry up. Uh, but... The worst case scenario is being in a job. You know, let me give Ryan, uh, I, I'm not going to talk about figures because it's not fair to do that, but Ryan, <coughs> within the first month, had made nearly his yearly salary um, wow. when he became a freelancer. Let's just say that. Um, not far off it. Um, so it is very easy um, to 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 move over and uh, you know as long as you can talk even if you can't talk and you can't do sales get someone to do it for you the leads have to come from somewhere you've got to devise that part of the business but if you're confident in your own seo ability and you can do seo you won't be short of money you will not be short of offers there's not a lot of good seos out there okay all right fair enough one of the, the things that I wanted to ask is, judging from your experience, because you've had more exposure to speaking to more marketing professionals that have either come you know, from, from working from a marketing agency to becoming a freelancer or even uh, 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 having a marketing agency, would you say that the reason why they're, one of the biggest reasons why they've transitioned over to becoming a freelancer or having a marketing agency, do you think it's because of the um, you know, the, the lack of expertise that they've been, you know, ushered into within marketing agencies? Do you think it's because of the, the you know, like the experience, you know, lack of experience that, that they're getting from that side? Or do you think that it, it could just be something as simple as they feel as if the marketing agency isn't, you know, really benefiting? You know, they might have an absolute passion for this industry and they might say that, you know, this agency isn't giving, you know, to clients what they should. Do you know what I mean? What do you find is predominantly the biggest reason why? I, I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's any one given reason. Mm. One, I think freedom's important. You know, um, you know, freedom is is vital uh, to to many people. They don't want to be tied to a desk nine to five, Monday to Friday. If you want to go to the dentist on a Wednesday afternoon, you should be able to go to the dentist, and you can make up the time, whatever. Um, you know, I think so. Getting away from the mundane nine to five desk job uh, is one thing. But certainly money comes into play as well. Uh, you know, why would you want to work for your peanut salary um, in an agency? Um, you know, there, there's more money out there as a freelancer. You know, picking up two or three clients um, on a grand a month is going to pay you more than you get in an agency. Um, you know, it's 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 madness. It's, it's just madness. Um, that that's the case. Um, so you've got, you know, if you pick up two or three clients, you then no longer have to travel to work. You no longer have to listen to some idiot telling you what you can and can't do, what you have to wear to work, you know, when you can have time off and all this kind of garbage. Um, so I think, you know, there's a lot of stuff there, but also, uh, and I'm not saying every agency is like this again, because it's not an agency battering session, but, Certainly within agencies, the model is they take a client's money and they will keep, I don't know, 50% of it for their 
profit or, or, or costs or whatever. And then the other 50%, they've got to spend on, you know, deliverables or whatever it might be. Um, but in a lot of cases, if they're, they're paying staff and all that kind of stuff, they can't actually afford the deliverables. So it's up to you and the agency to come up with some shit-ass deliverables. And uh, that isn't always going to help the client Let's be honest, you know, um, with it with the heavy overheads and heavy um, salaries, there's not a lot left for things that are actually going to help you rank. And uh, and again, I think you know, as an ACO, if you you're doing work and you're getting fired every six months from the client and not getting progression, you're not getting any job satisfaction. Um, you know, you're not getting the chance to have a proper run at a successful campaign. So I think from there you then don't develop um you know your skills your experiences your and everything else that's out there so i think it's a whole combination of stuff which then say you know people want to do things their own way uh, and i've got a mastermind where i've got many agency owners in there um <coughs> you know guys that went freelance that now own agencies and uh you know it's all about freedom money making and the ability to try and blow shit up and, and you know have different income streams, whereas in an agency, you're sat there, salary, there's no real, I mean, you could, of course, go and work at night time and start a little affiliate website, but you're, you're battered into the ground, you don't probably don't believe you're a real SEO, <laughs> and uh, that's the case, and again, going back to Ryan, um, he didn't believe affiliate money was a real thing, he didn't realise that, you know, getting clients in there and, you know, you know, ten k a month was it ever possible? Um, you know, that's that's just so far from what agency and and uh, you know even education. You know, the, the, these are obscene numbers for for that. But the reality is, it's just small numbers in the grand scheme of things. So uh, I think it's a uh, it's all about your mindset and and aspirations and everything. Um, and and to, to get out of there and it just opens up. A whole load of other opportunity you've got the ability to network when you want with who you want and all that kind of stuff and, and with agencies you don't get that time or freedom to do that i agree <clears throat> i love your comments on the on freedom i think there's there's loads i don't even think that's uh, that's isolated to to marketeers to be honest with you i think there's loads of people within different professions that just wish that they could just have that freedom you know to just yeah to just uh, go around, do their work and come back to it at a given time, you know, because obviously they, 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 they put in the efforts into that as well. But yeah. um, <clears throat> to, to switch tables uh, to the other side, to, 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 to focus on the business aspect, one of the things that um, I'm sure <clears throat> a lot of uh, freelancers and people that are in is, is search engine optimization <clears throat> might, um, you know, get asked frequently, or might not even be asked uh, at all. Judging from the business side, what would you say businesses? What, what would you say to businesses that are skeptical about whether or not to invest in SEO? This is something that I'm sure that loads of businesses um, struggle with because obviously there is there is there are certain elements where, you know, like uh, judging from the you know like the benefits from it, it's it's long winded. They might not even view that. But what would you say to to a potential business owner listening to this podcast that might be you know, on edge about whether or not to invest in, you know, in hiring a freelance or hiring a marketing agency to, to look after their SEO? I mean, all I could really say, um, you know, is go and look at statistics and case studies of people who are having success. Now, statistically, if you look at anything that's out there, organic traffic converts the best. Um, now, let me give you an example of this. I was speaking at an event in Prague a few months back and uh, I was being chased around by this affiliate manager woman of a company. Um, and she kept trying to have conversations with me. Um, so anyway, we caught up um, and we were having a conversation. She's like, Craig, I want you to become an affiliate for this particular company. And I'm like, why are you like, coming for me? Like, why not speak to someone else? Because I, I didn't really want to do it. And she's like, because I know that SEO traffic converts the best for me. She says, that's just a fact. Um, so it's, you know, one of those things that affiliate managers out there, com big companies know that organic traffic works well. If you look 
at the analytics, everyone knows organic traffic is still good for the long term. Of course, pay-per-click, you can get a massive return on investment. You can also use that as a good traffic source. But, you know, whether it's social media, whether it's pay-per-click, whether it's SEO, it's a traffic source. Why would you ever ignore one of them? You know, the, the great thing about SEO is it's unlimited. The You know, the with pay-per-click, you're paying per click. <laughs> you know, with SEO, if you get a million, you know, a million sales a month through your website, it doesn't cost you any more than your, your SEO retainer. So certainly, um, you know, from a return on investment point of view, certainly from a longevity point of view, and certainly from a, you know, going back to statistics, organic traffic is still a big, big thing. Um, people do knowingly skip the ads. People don't trust ads. You know, I speak to people and they're like, yeah, I always get by the ads. I don't want to cost that guy money or whatever it might be. So just human psychology suggests that people skip past that stuff Um more often than not. So, but on the flip side of that, 100% get it. You know, businesses are skeptical of SEO because so many rogue SEOs out there, so many rogue agencies, potentially every business has had their fingers burnt by two or three different SEOs in the past. And that is where the problem is. I don't think it's SEO in itself that scares people. It's the fact that they've tried it. But the big thing for me is, and I've been there, you know, working with clients, I've been kicked out of touch two months into a campaign, two weeks into a campaign, because the guy didn't think it was working. And you're like, dude, you didn't give me enough time either way to make that decision. Um, that's just, you know, I, that's something I can't help. Um, you know, I can't control if someone doesn't believe it's working. They ain't going to pay, simple as that, no matter what I've told them at the start. So, you know, for any business, are out there, you know, I, I would be certainly encouraging them to look into the statistics um, and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, anyone who's sceptical of it, scared of it, doesn't feel that it's an investment, you know, they see it as a big noose around their neck, isn't someone I would try and convince to do SEO. I would walk away from that person. Um, you've got to believe in the process. It's the same as me. As an SEO, if I didn't believe in myself, am I going to be successful with it? Probably not. I'm just going to mess around. And I think that's the same with a lot of businesses. They don't believe in it. They don't attribute enough budget to it. They don't take it serious enough. And in the end, they fail um, with the SEO part of it um, just because they've not spent enough time, money, or or whatever it might be uh, in educating themselves. So the one thing I would say to someone um, is understand as a business owner, understand SEO better so that you know what you're asking for, so that you can understand how it works, so that you can keep on top of your freelancer, if you like, um, you know, spend time, you know, doing a day's course on it to understand at least the basics of it so that you know that when you put up content, it doesn't just, you know, bring in uh, thousands of orders, you know, there's time, there's link building to get involved, there's technical to get involved, there's time involved for Google to crawl and index stuff. And it's not SEOs that dictate the time. Um, you know, it's just a combination of different things that happen, uh, result in optimization happening. So I think, you know, I would always try and force someone into um, training um, to help them understand it better and then they can make a decision on whether they think it's for their business or not. But I would argue that there's probably almost every business out there can benefit from some form of SEO. <clears throat> you raise a good topic there um, with regards to how people perceive um, ads when searching for relevant services or products. We, <clears throat> I recently put out a, a, a tweet on um, Twitter on the Make Marketing Great podcast, where uh, there was an article on SEMrush where they were stating that some 70 to 80% of users focus exclusively on organic results and ignore paid listings, which yeah. is a scary fact, to be quite honest with you. So it is, I do agree with you on the fact that um, SEO is definitely a wise investment. But for those listening, again, what you'll hear 
which is common amongst SEO uh, professionals is the fact that this is a long haul um, game. Do you know what I mean? To, to say that this is a three to six month, you know, like case where you'll see results instantly is, is further from the truth, to be quite honest with you. <clears throat> but um, going forward, I think uh, you're not a stranger to this. Uh, the, the start of 2023 has been highlighted with the likes of AI, particularly with the hashtag chat GPT and how that is going to influence like the likes of SEO. There are some, you know, people around, uh, you know, that, that are saying online that this could potentially ruin jobs, particularly within, you know, like the, the realms of like what we as SEO specialists uh, are working on. What are your views on artificial intelligence the, with the likes of chat, GB, chat uh, GPT and other platforms that are focusing on this AI technology to create content? And what do you think is going to be the future of this? I mean, Google have already slammed websites uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, you know, the helpful content update being one of the updates last year. They don't want people using AI content. Now, AI content is not a new thing by anyone, any stretch of the imagination. People have been using Jasper, Jarvis and stuff like that for many years. Um, so it's not a new thing, but obviously chat GPT, the output on it is very exciting. The fact that you can go in there and, you know, put in certain commands and what it throws out, it, it's amazing. I'm not going to sit there and say it's not. Um, but is Google going to reward that long term? I don't think so. You know, I think, you know, the there has been talk of that content being water, digitally watermarked. Now, the reason that it's been digitally watermarked is so that the AI can detect that it's AI so that it's not using it as truthful information when the AI is looking for credible information um, from Wikipedia, uh, you know, and whatever else they're pulling their data from. So it's not for a Google to, to detect whether it's, you know, AI content or not. That's irrelevant. AI has to be able to detect whether it's AI content or not, which is why they're going to do that. However, because of that footprint, it's going to be very easy for Google to detect its AI content. And is Google going to reward you with your AI content? I cannot see that being a long-term thing. Now, yes, there are people out there doing amazing case studies. They're launching 100,000 pages at a time and showing massive growth and all that kind of stuff, but they're equally going to slam uh, down as hard as they went up as soon as an update catches that content. That's just my opinion. Um, I certainly would be steering clear of ChatGBT, copying and pasting it direct from ChatGBT onto a website. I wouldn't be against using it as an assistant. Um, you know, I, I have used the AI content in the past successfully um, but there's a process um, that, that goes through it's not a case of spitting out pages at sheer volume that that quality side of things still has to be there now I will use AI I will then use a tool like Quillbot to paraphrase it I will then run it through Grammarly I will then also check it for plagiarism before it hits a website so there's a process to that now certain things with chat GPT as it writes in American English, um, it doesn't have the author commas in there. It is very easy for a human being to tell what is AI content, let alone Google. So, you know, the big thing here is AI content writes too well. <laughs> it's got very well-structured sentences. It doesn't do typos. That doesn't appear natural. So there's certain edits along the way before you publish something on a website to try and throw all of that off um, and, and also take it into consideration that the internet can't be full of American English content either um, that, that's perfectly written. It's just not going to happen. Now, <coughs> can ChatGPT be useful for writing 
meta descriptions, YouTube descriptions? Can it be good for writing an ebook? Can it be good for a combination of other things digitally? Of course it can. Um, of course it bloody can. Uh, you don't get it to write your Google ads for you. Get it to do a whole lot of other stuff. I just think that as SEOs, we're unfortunate that Google hasn't ever rewarded, you know, crappy content ever. That that's not down to Chat GPT. They just haven't ever. You can't copy and paste. You can't. You know, there, there, there's work you have to do um, in order to optimize a website, and and sadly. I don't think that uh, the AI tools fit in to that, um, but they can, they can, it can help massively in many other digital relating uh, areas. You know, you can even get ChatGPT to go and write your tweets for you. <laughs> you know, so I think it's certainly got a place in the world. Um, but if you're going to lay all your eggs in the one basket and sack off all your content writing team um, based on the the output that's coming from. AI content, I think you will very quickly um, find that you'll be hired, rehiring your content team um, and kicking yourself. That's just my opinion, though. I think you're quite right with regards to that. I think <clears throat> users may be surprised to know that there has been articles that reference the fact that Google is com- trying to counteract uh, AI generation, uh, generator content with the likes of AdSense, for example. They've highlighted within their user guidelines under thin content that they can already start to detect you know, uh, generated content for, for the likes of those that are trying to cheat and get their way into you know, s- splurging out on content on their website and utilizing it for, uh, for a monetary sense, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I think, I personally think that uh, chat uh, GPT is quite exciting for, for a number of reasons, but I would probably view it as a, a tool. When I, I mean, when I first looked at it, I was looking at it from a writer's block because obviously as content creators, we're always stuck with the fact that, you know, we want to create certain amounts of content. We only have a certain amount of time. And I always find myself sitting in situations where, you know, you just get stuck. But um, it's it's tricky to see that when you see on uh, social media platforms that are users that are literally creating like hundreds, if not thousands of pieces of content. And you see on their GSC uh, uh, portal that, you know, things are on the increase. But I, I agree with you. The, it's just coming up to an update where I believe that sooner or later, Google's going to catch on and is going to reference and probably take down uh, certain posts in, in that regard. But as we're coming up and obviously I appreciate the time that you have uh, with me today for those that are listening and again, aspiring to, to do more in 2023 and listening to you today, what would you say are your three tips within this space, especially for those that are looking towards, you know, trying to conquer 2023 in SEO, what would you say would be your three tips to getting ahead, especially with those that are in, you know, either a freelancer or working in marketing agencies, what would you, what, what tips would you give? I mean, I think they're all very basic tips. Um, you know, first one, do the basics right. I think uh, everyone in the digital marketing space is obsessed with chat GPT, they're obsessed with schema, they're obsessed with something, site speed, whatever it might be. But to the extent where I think people are not even doing the basics properly, they're not just adding content they're not just doing internal linking they're not building links they're not building a brand that they're, they're, they're focusing on all these other things that that you know I, I don't think have a long-term value so the first thing i'd be saying is do the basics right you'll be very 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 surprised at how far you get just doing the basics right um, purely because most people are not even doing that part right um, so do the basics right um, second thing I would be advising people is to take action um, the big thing that you know for me having spoke at events having run training having uh, you know my own mastermind uh, and that stuff the biggest thing I can say is take action so many people do not take action you could lay everything on someone's lap and they still won't do a bloody thing about it. They will sit there making excuses as to why they can't do it. They've got the information. What fucking stops you from getting on the keyboard and implementing it your own brain? Uh, you know, I can, or it might not be right, or what if, what if, and all that stuff. You know, just get it done. If it doesn't work out, 
you know, ask a question saying, dude, I've done what you said and nothing happens. Like, whatever, you know, help me out. What have I done wrong? Um, take action's a, a big, big thing. And people say, often say to me, Craig, you know, you give quite a lot away, uh, either speaking or on YouTube or whatever. Aren't you scared that you give too much away? Um, <coughs> I know that I could give everything away. And I know 99% of people ain't going to do shit with it. Uh, or they're going to twist it and fuck it all up because they they overcomplicate it. So the, 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 the third thing I'd be saying is don't overcomplicate it. See when someone tells you that, you know, this is what you do. It generally means that is what you do. <laughs> now, when I say that, people are like, it can't be that easy. You can't just go and, you know, get some links and, and you know, and all that stuff. Like, there has to be more to it. There isn't. There is no magic bullet here. There's no special button. There's no special tool that does all of this SEO thing for me. There's nothing being hidden by these so-called gurus. It just takes hard work, taking action, and actually simplifying the process. It's not it's not a complex game. It is a bunch of different things that you need to do in order to optimize something. Um, <coughs> whether that's on page, whether that's off page, whether that's you know auditing a website, just do these things, simplify it. What does that mean? And go and do it. So I think simplicity is something I don't see. And and you know, I certainly see other SEO people out there using technical jargon, which is beyond belief. Um, and some of the words that they're trying to coin make them sound more intelligent than you. Uh, and all this kind of stuff, they're not any more intelligent than you. Believe you me, if I can compete with these people, you can compete with these people. Um, and, and, and certainly the way that I always try and conduct myself when I'm doing talks and stuff is try to keep things simple and easy to the point where people are like, is that it? Like, is that all you, you do? Yeah, it's all I fucking do. That's all there is to it. Um, just do it. So, you know, it's, you know, when someone does it, it's, you know, gives you a training or whatever, just do it. Like, there's no you reading between the lines and adding 10 other bits on trying to make it better. Just do that part, see what impact it has, and then you can assess and add to it and twist it if you feel that you, you have to or you can do. But I think many, many people that massively overcomplicate everything they're doing great great very inspiring and um <clears throat> to end it off um i just wanted to say an, another thank you for coming on to the podcast today for those listening <clears throat> i'll have links to um craig's youtube channel the likes of his twitter and other social media profiles um but again thanks thanks again for coming through and speaking with me today on the make marketing great podcast no worries, Alan. Thank you for having me, mate, and uh, all the best with the new podcast. Hopefully it's a success and uh, you get many more guests on. Thanks. All right.